On hand today is the new MSI GTX 1070 Gaming X 8G, using the company's latest Twin Frozer 6 cooler. There are three Twin Frozer 6 models, which are called the Gaming 8G, Gaming X 8G, and Gaming Z 8G. The standard gaming model apparently misses out on the RGB lighting and operates at the reference clock frequencies. Then we have the Special X and Z models, both of which feature fancy lighting and come factory overclocked. You might assume that the X version is the more extreme of the two, but that isn't the case. The Z actually comes at the highest clock speeds. But before we check out the clock speeds, let's take a look at the 1070 Gaming X 8G board design and cooler. The latest generation Twin Frozer features Torx 2.0 fans, Zero Frozer Stay, smooth heat pipes, and airflow control technology. Okay, so a heap of marketing nonsense there, but what does it all mean? The Torx 2.0 fan feature means there are two fans working together to cool the 1070 Gaming XHG. The fan blade design is said to generate 22% more air pressure, which improves cooling performance and reduces the operating volume. Every second fin features a steeper, curved blade which accelerates the airflow, apparently increasing its effectiveness. The fans are supported by double ball bearings too, which do improve durability, longevity and help to reduce the operating volume. The Zero Frozer technology eliminates fan noise in low load situations by stopping the fans when they're not needed. GPU temperatures can rise up to roughly 60 degrees before the fans will become active. Unlike some of the extreme cards we've seen from the likes of Gigabyte and GameWid, the 1070 Gaming X HG isn't a triple slot card. Instead, we have a 42mm wide dual slot card, and despite that, it still manages to squeeze in two large fans on top of a rather big heatsink, which is supported by a squad of five nickel-plated copper heat pipes. These heat pipes have been smoothed on the base of the heatsink to ensure maximum contact with the copper base plate, which has also been nickel plated. MSI tells us that a premium thermal compound has been applied to ensure optimal heat transfer from the GPU to the base plate. It looks like pretty standard stuff, but then I guess you can't really tell how premium a thermal compound is by just looking at it, so we'll have to take their word on it. Covering the heatsink is an impressive red and black themed fan shroud that becomes even more impressive once the card's been powered up. Once active, the embedded LEDs make this graphics card come to life. The lighting can be controlled with the MSI Gaming app, and there's a few pretty cool effects on offer here too. The shroud just overhangs the PCB, taking the card to a total length of 279mm, so pretty standard stuff for a GTX 1070 graphics card. However, what isn't standard is the height. This thing stands 140mm tall thanks to a supersized PCB that we'll look at now. On the rear of the card we find a full size black backplate which features some neat looking cutouts along with a cool silhouette of a dragon. The backplate doesn't feature any backlighting on the X model, whereas on the Z model it does. Removing the bulk of the cooling, we find two additional heat spreaders covering the GDDR5 memory as well as the VRM area, so that's great to see. With the 1070 Gaming X HE stripped completely naked, we get a good look at the massive PCB and how MSI has designed this graphics card. As is often the case with high-end MSI graphics cards, their military class 4 grade components have been used. This is another marketing exercise for the most part, but there's still some good stuff here, such as the Super Ferret Chokes, and the component selection does follow MIL STD 810G certification. Speaking of chokes, we find a 10 plus 2 phase design on board, which, when coupled with an additional 6 pin connector, will be able to keep the GTX 1070 fed with enough power to maintain those 2.1 GHz overclocks. Out of the box, the card operates at a base clock of 1582 MHz with a boost clock of 1771 MHz, which is a mild 5% overclock. Using the MSI software, gamers can switch to an OC mode setting, which improves the base clock to 1607 MHz for a boost of 1797 MHz. Of course, thanks to Nvidia's unpredictable GPU Boost 3.0 technology, the card will likely run higher than the 1797 MHz for the most part. For quick and easy overclocking, gamers can refer to the MSI Gaming app, which allows for quick switching between the various operating modes. Games can also control the LED lighting here as well, and it's possible to enable on-screen overlay information too. Then for some serious overclocking, MSI has their separate afterburner utility. Afterburner is a program I often use for GPU overclocking, but it's nice to actually use it to overclock an MSI card. With Afterburner, we increase the voltage percent to plus 100, and the power limit to 126%. This allowed the core clock to be increased by 140 MHz and the memory clock by 600 MHz. GPU Z tells us this is a 1747 MHz base clock and a 1937 MHz boost clock, which seems much lower than what we're able to do with the Gigabyte 1070 Extreme Gaming. Of course, due to Nvidia's GPU Boost 3.0, we know the card can run faster than the suggested boost clock if kept under the thermal and power targets. 
In the case of the Extreme Gaming, this allowed the card to hold an operating frequency of 2139 MHz after a 20 minute stress test, which is bloody awesome. The MSI 1070 Gaming X 8G was just as impressive. In fact, more so as it held a frequency of 2167 MHz during the same stress test. So then, I guess it's time to see how it performs. Let's jump into the benchmarks and see how it got on. Out of the box, the Gaming X was just a single frame slower than the Extreme Gaming and 5 FPS faster than the Founders Edition, so a good result for MSI. However, better still are the custom overclocking results as the Gaming X beat the Extreme Gaming by a 4 FPS margin to get within 7 FPS of the GDX 1080 Founders Edition graphics card. Again, out of the box, the Gaming X is just a single frame slower than the Extreme Gaming. Yet, once overclocked, it overtakes the Extreme Gaming by a convincing margin with a 73 FPS average. That's a decent 12% boost over the factory overclock and 20% faster than the Founders Edition graphics card. This time, the Gaming X was 2 FPS slower than the Extreme Gaming out of the box, though it was 5 FPS faster than the Founders Edition. Once overclocked, the Gaming X again came on strong, sustaining an average of 92 FPS, making it 4 FPS faster than the Extreme Gaming. This was a 7% boost over the overclocked Founders Edition and 19% faster than the stock reference graphics card, which is really impressive. Now, this is where things get interesting. The GTX 1070 Founders Edition consumes very little power. Our entire test system consumed just 236 watts watts on average while gaming with it installed. And overclocked, the Founders Edition raised the total power usage to just 245 watts. Out of the box, the MSI Gaming X pushed the system consumption to 254 watts, an 8% increase over the Nvidia reference card. Compared to the Extreme Gaming, the MSI model only increased the total system consumption by 2%, so nothing to write home about here. However, once we take our maximum custom overclocked results into account, we find a different story. When I reviewed the Gigabyte 1070 Extreme Gaming last week, I was surprised by how much power consumed when overclocked, pushing the system usage to 272 watts. The MSI model smashes that figure, reaching 295 watts, virtually the same power draw seen when using the Gigabyte GTX 1080 Extreme Gaming. This then explains why the MSI Gaming X is able to produce such impressive results when overclocked. Still, this makes me wonder how the thermals impact as well as the operating volume. Surprisingly, despite the increased power draw when overclocked, the Gaming X only ran 2 degrees hotter than its out-of-the-box configuration. At 68 degrees, the car was obviously quite cool when compared to the stock 77 degree operating temperatures of the Founders Edition. Still, it did run quite a bit hotter than the massive Gigabyte Extreme Gaming card, which just managed to keep below 60 degrees when using the factory overclock. What's interesting, or rather surprising, is that the 1070 Gaming X didn't generate any more noise once overclocked. The card remained whisper quiet as the fans continued to spin at just 1100 RPM. This is an incredible result, especially considering it allowed the card to maintain a clock speed in excess of 2.1 GHz. MSI has delivered what I expect to be one of the very best GeForce GTX 1070 graphics cards around. Out of the box, the Gaming X pretty much matched the frame rate performance of Gigabyte's Extreme Gaming. The thermals weren't as impressive, despite being a big improvement over the Founders Edition. Still, it's worth noting that the Extreme Gaming does take up three slots, whereas the Gaming X is a more traditional two-slot card. The higher overclocking temp of the Gaming X didn't impact the overclocking performance either. In fact, we're able to extract around 20% more performance when compared to the stock Founders Edition, which was mighty impressive. The only potential blemish on an otherwise perfect report card is the power consumption. Overclocked, the Gaming X was a bit of a power pig, consuming almost 30 watts more than the 1080 Founders Edition, and roughly 60 watts more than the 1070 Founders Edition. It also consumed a little over 20 watts more than the overclocked Extreme Gaming. Out of the box, the power consumption was very similar to the Extreme Gaming, so there isn't much of an issue there. Even so, our custom overclock didn't push the total system draw above 300 watts, and that includes a Core i7-6700K processor clocked and locked at 4.5 GHz. So in reality, the power consumption shouldn't be an issue, particularly given how cool and quiet the Gaming X runs when overclocked. The only other potential issue is the design, how the card looks. Personally, I really like it, though I recognise you ideally want to have a red and black theme going on, which, thankfully for MSI, seems to be 90-something percent of all gamers. The LED lighting is cool, though the RGB side logo is a little pointless given the LEDs on the face of the card can't be changed from red. Price wise, the 1070 Gaming X is currently at 460 US or 750 Aussie. Right now, the lowest asking price for a 1070 on Newegg.com is 430 US, and that card happens to be the MSI 1070 Armor OC, so they really aren't charging much of a premium for the Gaming X. In a nutshell, the MSI GTX 1070 Gaming X 8G is quiet, overclocks well, provides excellent out-of-the-box performance, operates at sub-70 degree temperatures, doesn't throttle even when overclocked, and only takes up two slots. So in other words, it's a real winner. What do you guys think? 
Let me know in the comments like you always do. I'm your host Matt as always, and I'll see you guys next time. YouTubers like me depend on your support to continue improving the quality and content of our videos. To support the channel directly, consider becoming a patron to also get access to a heap of cool rewards and exclusive giveaways. Also, don't forget you can check prices and buy the products I looked at in this video through the Amazon links in the video description below. Thank you kindly for supporting me and the Hardware Unbox channel, it means a lot to me and I really do appreciate it, and in return I'll continue to work as hard as I can to keep producing the content you enjoy.